Number 82. Which of the following compounds requires the most energy to convert one mole of the solid into separate ions? Okay, and then we have a multiple choice. We have five answer choices. Magnesium oxide, strontium oxide, potassium fluoride, cesium fluoride, or magnesium fluoride. Which one would require the most energy to convert the solid into its ions? And by converting a solid into its ions, one of the phases that it's got to go through is it has to have a lattice energy. All ionic compounds have a lattice energy. So that's what we're going to be thinking of here. Now, a lattice energy is the energy needed to take your compound in a gas phase and go to its ions in a gas phase. But basically, if you know which one would have a higher amount of energy for your lattice energy, you would definitely be able to know the most amount of energy that's required for the solid because it's, it's basically, um, you're basically talking about the same thing. It's breaking it into its ions. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite what these ions are, right? So we got MgO, SRO, KF, CSF, and MgF2. Okay, so let's break it down. Let's do our five arrows and let's just break it into its ions. Now in this case, we don't even care really about what states we're in. Let's just find the ions. So we have magnesium plus oxygen, strontium, SR, plus oxygen, right? We're just severing all ties between each uh, ionic compound. We have potassium and fluorine. We got cesium and fluorine. And we got magnesium and fluorine. Now let's just put some charges to it. This is where you're going to be looking at the periodic table. Magnesium is in group two, so that's a plus two. Oxygen is group 6A or 16, so that's a negative two. Strontium is in group two as well. It's right below magnesium, so that's a plus two. Oxygen, we just said, was negative two. Calcium, calcium, <laughs> potassium is in group one, so that's a plus one. And fluorine is a halogen, so group seven, 17, 7A is a minus one. Cesium is also in group one, so plus one, and the fluorines are going to be minus one. Magnesium, plus two, and fluorine minus one. Now, do we really care if we're balancing this, this equation? Like, do I really care if there's two fluorines and put a two here? No, absolutely not. That's not the point of this question, but sure, we should always have good practices and make sure that all of our equations are balanced. But in this case, we just wanna find out which one requires the most energy to convert the solid into an, to its ions, AKA the lattice energy. Now, there's basically two uh, key components that will raise a lattice energy. And since you want the most energy, you want a high energy. So I guess let's start from the top. A big component into having lots amount of lattice energy, right? A lot amount of energy to break the compound is to just say, the total amount of electrons transferred. The total amount of electrons transferred is basically going to be a big game changer for who has low lattice energies and who has high lattice energies. The more electrons that are transferred in the ionic compound um, has a higher amount of lattice energy. The more electrons transferred, the more, um, I guess we'll say, stronger attractions to each other and then it just takes a lot of energy to break that attraction. Now, the electrons transferred are going to be from your charges. So we just have to basically check out these charges. And the more charges wins. Now, for the magnesium, it's a plus two and a negative two. Two electrons were lost from the magnesium and two electrons were gained. So in this case, and maybe if I can... Whoop, I can't do that. So I guess we'll just do it on this side. So we'll say we have a, we have two electrons transferred. 
between the magnesium and the oxygen. Strontium as well, plus two, negative two, two lost, two gained. So you have two electrons transferred. Kf plus one minus one. So one electron went from the metal to the nonmetal. So I'll say one E transferred. The E minus just means transferred. CS plus one negative one. So one electron transferred. Now with magnesium fluoride, this one is kind of a little bit iffy because it really depends on who, uh, what ion you're talking about. If you're talking about magnesium, that means that it's going to be transferring two electrons. But for each fluorine, each fluorine can only receive one. So this one is kind of a little bit up in the air because you have different charges. So we'll say two electrons for magnesium, but if we're considering fluorine, it's one electron that's receiving. Now in this case, remember, the higher the numbers, the higher the electrons transferred, will always increase that lattice energy. So two is better than one. So I have two electrons here, two electrons here, and these all, since we do have one electron for fluorine, we're going to get rid of all of these. So just like that, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Chances are, look, it's not a coincidence that all the fluorines are gone. The oxygen, since it's a pure negative two electrons being taken, versus the negative one, this is going to skyrocket the lattice energy. But now it comes down to the magnesiums, right? Or the strontiums. Which one is going to have the most energy? Well, the second property is all about atomic radius. The smaller the radius, the higher the lattice energy. So here is your atomic radius trend right here. Remember, atomic radius decreases as you go from left to right, and it increases as you go from top to bottom. So we just got to find out here where magnesium is and strontium. Because for oxygen, it's the same element. So no comparison there. But on the periodic table, magnesium is a little bit in the middle, and strontium is two groups down. So, or actually two periods down, I guess, if you say it that way. But strontium is going to be a larger atom or a larger ion. Magnesium is the smaller one. And the smaller radii closer together, that's always going to increase the lattice energy. So because of this, the magnesium being the smallest one, that means that MgO would be the compound that would have the most energy because it has the highest lattice energy. And that's it. We love multiple choice because we can reason with it. So thank you for tuning in. I hope this helped you out. Let me know in the comments, subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to helping you in more questions. Um, yeah, take care. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.